Okay, so let's talk about the insane Cape Town property market. Aside from increased demand for tourism, Cape Town is also benefiting from a surge in semigration from various regions generally to the north of the country. In addition, international upheaval has made the Cape an attractive proposition for numerous international buyers. Prospective buyers are particularly attracted to the well-managed Cape Town Metro and the diverse lifestyle offerings from the Atlantic seaboard with its vibrant v &A waterfront to the vineyards and tranquility of the southern suburbs. Cape Town has already seen an influx of international buyers active in the market not only in the top but across all price ranges demonstrating confidence in the city's property market another factor is that South Africa offers exceptional value for money in Cape Town for example one million dollars will enable you to acquire a residential property of approximately 200 square meters for comparison, the same price tag will only secure you around 33 square meters in New York City, 34 square meters in London, 43 squares in Paris, 44 squares in Sydney, and a very small 17 squares in Monaco. Furthermore, this does not compromise on the lifestyle offered in South Africa, which is among the best available in the world. If you live local like I do this might not seem very important in fact it's the other way around comparing cost per square meter in Cape Town compared to where I live or where you might live is a completely different ball game in in fact it's much more expensive per square meter to buy in Cape Town compared to where I live in my opinion, Cape Town and the Western Cape is currently the best place to buy luxury property and these type of properties will benefit mostly from appreciation. If you are an international viewer, this will be by far the best place to park your hard earned money without taking on much risk. However, if you live in South Africa and do not yet have a lot of wealth or cash to invest, Cape Town might not be the best place to invest your money. Cape Town properties are mainly focused on equity type gains with high growth potential. Cash flow properties, however, are very hard to find. This is something that I realized on the channel because a lot of people has commented on my 1% rule video saying that these properties are basically non-existent. Cash flow properties definitely do exist in that area but they are very hard to find and they mostly come with student accommodation style investments or multilets and maybe even Airbnbs. Most people won't have the knowledge and skill to invest in these type of property strategies like student accommodation and multilets, so they stick to the normal single let property and looking for a single let cash flow deal in Cape Town is very, very hard to find. So to keep things simple, I would say that Cape Town is a great place to keep your money but not the easiest place to make your money and just hear me out it's easy to to have a lot of money and to invest it in Cape Town but if you want to generate a, a lot of money without having a lot of money it's a different game I'm going to show you guys a typical calculation on a Cape Town property just to give you an idea of what the numbers would look like so I went ahead and searched for a property in Seapoint which is a very popular area and we can see that this property is listed for 3.75 million rand it's a two bedroom one bathroom 97 square meter apartment and it has some beautiful views you'll see it is nothing fancy in fact it has a couple of old finishes like the floor um, and here's a shot from outside the building and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my return on investment calculator to show you guys what a typical deal would look like if you followed the normal single let strategy. I went ahead and searched for a similar property that is to rent. We can see that it's a two bedroom, one bathroom, 104 square meters. So in fact, this property is actually a bit larger than the one that's for sale. And we can see that it's currently um, up for rent for 25,000 Rand. 
and I'm just going to show you guys some of the photos. Again, this might not seem as modern, but it it's basically the same type of vibe. This is the typical rent that you'll receive for a property of this size, which is insane. It's quite quite expensive, but again. Um, I went ahead and used all of the numbers for this return on investment calculation. We can see the property value, 3.75 million, and the purchase price we used 3.75 million. The, uh, another downside of buying property in Cape Town is that most of the time you won't be able to negotiate massive, uh, massive discounts. And if you are happy, you'll be able to get a 3 to 5% discount, especially if it's in a great area and if the property is in a very good condition. So for this example, we'll keep the purchase price the same as the, the asking price. We can see that the rental income is 25,000 Rand. If we had to bond this property and we took out a loan for this property, which is um, over 30 years and at full asking price, we can see that the total bond cost will be around 37,000 Rand. Our levies is 3,200, our rates and taxes is 1,750. We'll leave out commission, vacancy, repairs, Wi-Fi and water and electricity just to keep things simple. And here we can see that the holding cost of this property, meaning it's these three costs combined, will be a massive 42,000 Rand if you use a bond. When we scroll down, we can see that this property has a negative cash flow of 17,000 Rand, meaning if we follow this strategy of buying a property with debt, renting it out, we will lose 17,000 Rand each and every month or around 200,000 Rand a year. So it's great if you can afford this, but most people don't really have 200,000 Rand extra to just to kind of um, pay on interest for someone else's lifestyle. When we calculate the return on investment, we have to use the money that we invested. Because it's a bond, we only had to pay the bond and transfer cost, meaning this is the only money that we invested. And if we divide our yearly negative cash flow with our money invested, we can see that it's a negative 63% return on investment. So what a lot of people do is they would rather buy this property cash. A lot of people like buying property cash and it can make sense if you have the cash available, but still it's not necessarily the best way to do it. Let's say for example, we bought this property cash and we don't have any bond registered on this property. We'll see that our rental income will still stay the same, but our monthly cash flow will be much more because now we only have to pay for our levies and rates and taxes, which makes our holding cost around 5,000 Rand and which gives us a positive cash flow of 20,000 Rand a month. What we have to change now is that now we have more money down in the deal. And if we had to only pay for the transfer, um, it will be around 260,000 Rand plus our um, amount of the property which is 3.75 million which gives us around 4 million rand invested in this deal so our money down is 4 million rand our, our yearly cash flow is suddenly 240,000 rand if we divide our yearly cash flow with our money invested we can scroll up and we can see it gives us a return on investment of six percent and this is exactly why i say that investing in these type of properties in a single let form isn't necessarily the best way to park your money it gives you a six percent return on investment and just ask yourself this if you had four million rand Will you be able to get a better return on investment than 6%? And the answer is yes. Um, of course, this is not factoring in the appreciation of the property and we'll get there in just a moment. Everywhere on the internet, you can read about Cape Town's property trends and see data like property values that has increased with 141% from 2010. And that works out to be around a 10% compound annual growth rate, which is insane. Unfortunately, this is part of speculation and we can't guarantee that this trend will continue. But generally, you just need quite a bit of capital, 
when you want to buy property in the Cape Town market and it can be a great way to build your wealth. But in my opinion, again, owning property in Cape Town can keep you rich and make you richer. But generally, it's very difficult to start a property portfolio there. Leverage properties in Cape Town does not make too much sense. Again, like I just showed you. And most of the time, the market is driven by cash offers. And buying cash in these areas can be a great way to receive a solid return over the medium to long term, but it's not as accessible to many South Africans. So if you bought this property cash with a 6% return on investment and you add your 10% compound annual growth rate over, let's say, 13 or 14 years, you'll have a pretty decent internal rate of return, let's say on average 15 to 18%. But again, that is focused on the long term. You will have to be able to first of all afford the cash payment or be able to cover your shortfall on these expensive properties. Okay, so I think we've established that Cape Town is a completely different property market and I think it's important to understand your investment strategy and location very well. Before you consider investing in property in Cape Town, um, it's important to understand what it is that you actually want to achieve. But once you know what you want to do there, there is an insane amount of money to be made in Cape Town.